What is up guys? We are officially back in the shoe boxes, back on the truck. I'm super stoked to have it on there. And we're gonna be going on lots of adventures soon, so stay tuned for that. Today we're gonna to really quickly be going through my electrical system, and that's because my electrical system is what I believe super beneficial to have, but super easy to install. So I'll just quickly show you how it works. Um, here on the inside, excuse the mess, I just pulled it out of storage. This is my battery cut off, so instantly I can just, nothing works once you cut it off. This is my fuse box, I'll explain it all in a second. But here we have our first few switches. These first two switches are my main to use lights. So this one is for the outside floodlights there. I have two of them, you can see through the window there. The next switch here is for my main four interior lights. The reason why I placed it so low is so it's super easy to reach from the inside. So you can quickly get the lights on before you get in. So you're not like climbing in here in the dark. You know, I have my battery cut off and fuse box and everything. Everything's basically wired down through here up to my switches. And then I have a bunch of wires just kind of open there because I never did interior paneling, um, but that goes to all these lights. So this far switch here is for my kitchen area. Honestly, this is probably my most used light switch just because I love using this one before bed. This middle light switch is for the lights above the bed. And lastly, we have this little system here, which is my cheap little battery monitor. This thing here is honestly a piece, but hey, it does the job a little bit. So yeah, and there, you know, I have my USB charging and that's how I charge my phone and other stuff like that. Your lights, this switch down here is actually for my DC to DC charger. So I'll show that in just a sec here. So when we come outside the camper, just on the passenger back right here, you see this is my battery. This is an AGM battery. Why did I go with an AGM battery? The answer is actually really simple. Are they the best? No, but they are the cheapest by far. And as well, they can be used really well in the winter. This is a camper meant for the winter and AGM batteries can be drawn from or charged at negative 20 degrees Celsius, which is super helpful. So yeah, this is kind of the setup. I'm gonna really quickly give you a walk through. You can see the wires right through there. So this is where it all begins up at the starter up at the starter battery. So right away, these are just jumper cables. Okay guys, and you can see they're gonna run over there. But right away, we have a 60 amp fuse. I'll explain that later on. I have a positive wire here and a negative grounding to the truck. So the wires go all the way there. Then they go down. And I literally just zip tie them along the bed frame. I think you can maybe see them. I kind of forget where they are, to be completely honest with you. Um, so I don't know who, even if you just saw them or not, but they eventually come out down there and get brought up here. They basically run along the bedside and eventually, yeah, they run along the bedside. I think you can see down there and they come into this DC to DC charger. So the DC to DC Renogy charger that I have is 40 amps. You can also use an isolator, but the DC to DC battery charger is smart. It charges your battery specific, whether it's a lithium or an AGM, and you can set your dip switches. So it gives it the most proper charge, not just the same as your starter battery. Okay, long story short, the cables come in from the starter battery into this. Coming out of this, we have another 60 amp fuse. On Renergy's website, they tell you what size fuse to put and where to put them. So I just follow the instructions. Here we have another fuse and it's only on the positive side and that goes to the positive terminal over there. Negative goes here. And then these small cables up here are just running that switch. So I have the ability to turn this system on and off, which is really nice if I ever think my starter battery is really low or anything like that. I can just switch it off and keep charging. So long story short, my starter battery with this DC to DC charger charges up my secondary battery. And I have a little wooden piece that just kind of sticks back here. It covers up this whole area and I ratchet strap it in. This is how I secure in the battery, just a piece of wood and it's just ratchet strapped in there. I have a little handle, just some weather protection for the battery guys. Okay, so I already put this box on by accident, but basically all you miss is that there's a red and a black positive and negative jumper cable that then go through this wall that comes from the battery. That's basically putting the power from the battery inside. So here, this black 
right there you can see them they come right through the hole there this black and the red the black one goes straight to the negative but I'm, I'm gonna get into this in a sec so just bear with me negative comes from the negative comes from the battery goes into the negative of the fuse box the positive comes into this switch so this is my disconnect so if i ever have an electrical issue or i just want to cut the battery that is off right there and this is on super easy to install you literally go positive positive in and positive out and that goes to the positive of the fuse box and that's exactly how you wire any of these switches so all this is this switch right here is a positive is coming from my oh my oops so a positive is coming from my fuse box it's going behind here it goes to a switch and then the positive continues from the switch all the way out there that's how you wire a switch super easy so basically this is the positive bus bar on my fuse box and this is the negative bus bar on my fuse box and from there it's super simple basically every single light switch and every single charging system everything i have that runs off of here is just a po these are all positives on the sides and the tops are all negatives and you have a little case and there's a super simple equation to figure out what size fuse you need for led lights and stuff like that all my fuses are literally like one to five amps and if you're running a fridge or anything like that you do the exact same thing you would just need a different size fuse and that's all based on the withdrawal power of, of your fridge or fan or any other appliance now guys i just want to really emphasize something here look how simple this system is okay i have four lights and you really don't need anything special at all to really improve the quality of your build so so i just quickly want to say i'm a really big believer in adding electrical to your build adding some lights adding adding some charging stations for your phone it really just takes your DIY project up a whole nother level and it's really not that hard to do. You can get a little six volt battery, a little 16 to 20 gauge wire, wire up a couple of these cheap lights and boom, you have like this really nice, this really nice lighting system. You really don't need that many lights. Like four lights in here almost is too bright um, and it's definitely more than enough. Um, but yeah, guys, it really, really does improve the whole quality of your build. And I also think it's just a really good skill to learn. All the lights in here are wired in parallel. Is that hard to do? Absolutely not. All you really need to do to run anything in parallel is run a positive and a negative wire to the ex to to every single light or every single appliance. So these two guys are wired in parallel. That means... A positive and negative is going to here and then the same positive and negative continues over to here there's not much more to it the only other thing i'll say is the reason i didn't go for solar is because in bc we get to one to two hours of sunlight per day on average in some areas that i like to camp like revelstoke so moral of the story i'd be driving my truck way more often than the sun would be shining and i just thought it'd be a better way to charge it up if I ever really need power, I can always just turn my truck on and I've actually never had to do that, but it is something I can do. But yeah, that is pretty much it guys. Um, I love my electrical system. I just feel like it adds so much value to any DIY build. The reason I did a walk around today is because I just want to show you how simple it is. I had so many headaches when I tried building this, but now looking back on it, it's really not that bad to do. And I could do this again in probably less than a few hours. So. Yeah, I hope that motivates you. I hope you uh, enjoy taking a look on the inside. Again, it is so messy in here, but we're on our way to our, we're on our way to a next trip soon. So see you in the next one.